Hello, everyone. Welcome to another screening series Q&A. My name is Camelia Shofani, and I'm the Senior Manager of Public Programs and Events here at the International Documentary Association. For our blind or low vision attendees, I'm going to visually identify myself. I have dark hair, light skin, and brown eyes, and I'm wearing a black t-shirt <laughs> and wearing a gold chain. This evening, we'll be having a conversation between filmmaker Bing Lu and director David Seif, whose film Bad Axe premiered at South by Southwest earlier this year. Joining David is EP Daniel Day Kim and film participants and family members Jacqueline Seif, Chun, and Rachel Seif. Chun, excuse me. For more information on our screening series lineup and Q&As, please visit documentary.org forward slash screening dash series. And before we get started, as always, I'd like to offer a brief land acknowledgement. We recognize the Gabrielino Tongva as the past, present, and future caretakers of the land, water, and cultural resources in the unceded territory of Los Angeles. And without further ado, I give it over to Bing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching this film. It's an incredible film. Um, David actually talked a little bit briefly with me while he's in the edit process, and I was happy to connect with him early on and recently saw the finished product and was blown away, as I'm sure all of you are. Um, but um, to, tell, oh, to, to tell you a little bit uh, about, you know, uh, visually what I look like, um, I'm wearing a maroon button down. Um, I'm sporting a little bit of a mullet right now. I uh, have glasses with croquis that I'm, I'm trying out as well. Um, and then I'll just go around and have everybody else introduce themselves um, as well as, um, you know, visually what they look like. Thanks, Bing. Um, my name is David Siv. I am the director, producer, cinematographer of uh, the film Bad Axe. Uh, for the visually impaired, I'm wearing a brown shirt. Uh, I have black hair and I'm also wearing glasses. Bing, I just... Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, my name is Chan Se Beng, and uh, I wear a gray shirt, short dark hair, and sit right between my daughter and my wife. Hi, my name is Rachel Sev. I have a uh, bun in my hair right now. It's black hair. Um, I'm a little bit light skinned for being Mexican, and I have a um, Rachel shirt on because I was working earlier. Hi, um, my name is Jacqueline Siv, and I have long, dark, um, brownish black hair, and I am wearing a black and white striped sweater. And I'm Daniel Day Kim. Uh, I am East Asian. Uh, I have dark hair. I'm wearing a black button down uh, with some black rim, uh, black rim glasses that are not as stylish as Bing's. <laughs> <laughs> That's debatable, subjective. Um, thank you, though. Uh, great. Why don't we just jump right into it. D David, can you talk about, I mean, it's a deeply personal film. It's been filmed over a few years. Um, it's about your family. Um, can you talk about how this film came to be? Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, this film, you know, it kind of started even before filming actually began. And I say that because I always wanted to share my family's story. Um, you know, my dad being a Cambodian refugee who came here in 79, uh, with nothing but the shirt on his back, my mom, a, a Mexican American woman, and just two hardworking, passionate individuals that moved to this rural community of Bad Axe, tried to get a donut shop going, failed at that, turned into a restaurant, also failed at that for, you know, close to two decades, but eventually was able to turn it around with the help of my oldest sister, Jacqueline, and, um, make it not into only a successful restaurant, but also like just the center of community in um, in the town of Bad Axe. Uh, for me, that was just like the story of the American dream that, you know, I, I think my parents just represent the American dream so well. And that was a story I just wanted to share. So when the pandemic happened, um, I really began that journey of, of telling that story because I had all this free time and I just sat down in the early days of the pandemic and just began to interview my parents, just getting all this like rich, like oral history. Um, and on the flip side of that, um, I was a bored, unemployed filmmaker because the film industry was shut down, um, who, 
you know, had to come home from New York City to just be with family, just like so many other young adults did during the pandemic. Um, and so I knew it was like an interesting time to like be under one roof with like all my siblings. Uh, so I was just filming like every day, all the time, not really with the intention of like, oh, this is going to be a documentary, but more so like these were just, you know, kind of just like these special moments, like home videos that we could just like look back on one day. And then I think, you know, somewhere along the process of just this crazy consequential year and all this footage I was capturing, I realized that like, okay, all this early footage of like my parents, like really just telling me about the American dream and how they, you know, built the restaurant up from nothing and made it successful and how we're still trying to keep that alive in the face of everything 2020, like threw at us, you know, a, a pandemic, racial reckoning, um, a country like as divided as ever with a very important election. I realized like, we're still trying to keep that American dream going. Like it, it wasn't just like we had this restaurant now and successful. It was like, oh, 2020 brought on all these challenges where you still have to work so much harder to keep that alive. And that's really where, you know, marrying those two things really, you know, came together and resulted in, you know, the final, final cut of the film. Yeah, and what a gift to the world the film is. I mean, I was I emailed you privately and I was like, this is the best pandemic era film that I've seen. Um, and it just really captures what everybody went through in just such a specific way, um, which makes it so universal. Um, I, I want to move on to Chun, Rachel, and Jacqueline. I mean, uh, there's we have, I'm sure everybody has so many questions all the time after they see the film. But can you talk a little bit about the process of what it was like to participate? In this project, you know, I I like to get in it because I guess I guess the hardest part is that we are so different, you know, as the Asian American father and then have a really outspoken children, you know, and uh, it it was uh, a a moment that you have a lot of doubt at the beginning, you know, for the business that we try so hard to build in the rural community. And here our children are so outspoken it's about what they believe, you know, the, so whether it's about the election or it's about the uh, racism, what happened during that time. And uh, it, it was difficult, but yet there is a point in time, I think, as a father that you almost have to, you have to trust your children's instinct. You have to support them for everything that you have taught them, you know, to do the right thing. And that was that was a hard part that, you know, to uh, to adapt to, I guess, you know, which way, so. And I would say that it was a little bit of a, a, a I think at some point we've all threatened David and, you know, at one point to put the camera down. I, I know that my dad may have threatened to actually kill him <laughs> a time or two, you know, just when you're, um, you're, there's David is you know he's he's my little brother and he's you know he's and we're a very close um family so we're just very open and honest and you know there's no it's not like there was a camera there it was like oh that's just David there with his camera so everything was so you know real and and like you know all these things that we're going through in real time there are I know that every family I'm sure has you know their their differences and their fights and everything but when it's captured on camera, there is that part where you're like, I don't, like, I don't want anyone to see, like, you know, you don't want people to see, you know, the, the worst sides of the you, truth, which sometimes yeah. come out when, you know, you're with your loved ones, especially under those circumstances. So, I mean, I, not that I speak for my parents, but I think there were several times where, you know, but ultimately, it, you know, we, we knew that he wanted to tell a story, so. And there was a lot to tell, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> and it's quite different living, it's not like when you're raising your children and everyone's under the same roof. I mean, you're with adult children now. And so that kind of amplifies different, you know, uh, arguments or spaces or things like that. So it was a little challenge or a lot challenging. I'm not going to say a little, it was a lot challenging. Um, however, you know, we've, we've, I think we've come a long way since then. Yeah, and part of what was so special about this film is that, um, you know, David allowed us inside of those conversations, you know, they're, it's so true of documentary films that these are real people's lives and the film doesn't have an effect on their lives and on their communities and their place in it. Um, as a follow up, I'm curious, you know, having gone through this experience, what's it been like to see the film to see it go into the world and connect with people. 
I, I have to say that, you know, the first time to saw the film on the big screen, you know, I saw the bits and pieces, you know, during the, yeah. when David released the trailer, but when we, when we actually showed up for the first time in Austin, Texas, the view on the big screen, it was really overwhelming. I guess the, the best part is bring tear to my eye. It was, uh, it's when the audience respond at the end, you know, when we get up there. And during the show, you can hear the audience laugh and the audience cry. You can see all of that. And then that will make it, uh, make it really emotional for me as a father, which is, I'm not lying. I, I do have doubt during the time when the film was made because of, because where we at, because where we at. And then I have to say as a, as father, you know, I did so many moments I regret, you know, for the argument that I have with my children, but- uh, But you learn. But, but I learn, I learn, I, I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not the same father as like my father to me. How is that? Because of, uh, you know, I, I think I, I can't speak that for anybody, but as a Chinese Cambodian, you know, I have a father that whatever he said, go, you know, when, when my dad say, it was sunny, when it's rain outside, you just kind of have to agree with them. But uh, in this case, it was really different that, uh, that my children was really outspoken. There's many times when we have our, you know, our argument, our disagreements and all that, and we put on the table. And, uh, but to see the film for the first time on the big screen, that is when I feel so proud to say, wow, I have a wonderful children that are willing to speak up to do the right thing. I think for me, um, having the experience with going along with David to a lot of the film festivals, it's the response that we get from the audience, but how they relate to it. Mm -hmm. For me, that's, it's, big it's bigger than I imagined and so that part has been really um I don't know what word to use but like to have those conversations after the film and you know people just coming up to you either like relating with you or telling you their story or whatever whatever it is and you you listen and you know I I really appreciate that I, I like the restaurant story the restaurant story is that I remember being able to sit down with Diane and having lunch together and we have so much in common about the restaurant, restaurant yeah. you know, because, you know, as the Asian American, you know, we came to this country. For me, I, I, I fell first grade three years in a row. Okay, <laughs> so when I came here, when, when my mom said, right after high school, she asked me, you should think about going to college. I say, mom, I can barely make it through high school. So, and then what's the first thing we do? We get into the restaurant industry, right? I teach in martial art and then, I work in the restaurant. I try to learn how to make donuts. And then we have so much in common with many other people that saw the movie talking about the restaurant story. So restaurant, I think, was like the key essential to our conversation, you know, how what we all been through and what, what our children went through. I think a lot of people resonated with the, like the big sister <laughs> yeah. or the little sister <laughs> or the... You know. I think a lot of people just see themselves, you know, and that's yeah. what I've learned as we've been showing the film more and more, like they see themselves in our family, you know, like I have, my dad is just like, you know, Chun or like, you know, I, I see myself in Jacqueline, like she's, you know, it's, it's really neat when people see, you know, see a version of themselves represented in the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's really amazing to feel like you're connected to people outside of yourself that, you know, you never thought you would be. Um, D Daniel, can you talk about how you got involved with the film? Well, I'd love to say I was there from the very beginning and that it was it was my idea and uh, that <laughs> I wanted to show a great sizzling portrait of the heartland of America. But, uh, you know, the truth of it is uh, I'm a fan, just like everyone else's. And when I screened the film for the first time, uh, I, I really thought that this was uh, the perfect story to tell uh, about the pandemic, about what it means to be Asian American, uh, about what it means to use our voices as Asian Americans, and about what it means to uh, to be a family, because it's uh, it's such a multi generational story. You have the father and the daughters. You have a husband, the story of a husband and a wife. You several husband, a couple of husbands and wives, 
and a, an impending grandchild. So, you know, um, it's really the story of so many different things. Uh, and, you know, to Jacqueline's point, you know, there are so many uh, TV shows that, that uh, purport themselves to be reality, but this is the closest thing I've ever seen to an actual reality show uh, and, uh, and a true story about a real family. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, very, very much. I 100% agree. Um, there's something so truthful about this film um, in a time where, you know, truth is uh, sort of wrestled over. Um, and it's really refreshing to see a film like this that's so honest. Um, David, can you talk about what it took to get there? Um, you know, you showed us a little bit of the, you know, behind the scenes wrestling with, you know, what is this film? You know, like, how, who does it affect? Um, can you talk about some of the um, quandaries that you were facing and how you dealt with them in making the film? Yeah, you know, for me, I think going along this journey in the in the early edits of the film, it was a couple of things. I mean, um, I remember when I called you and I think this was, you know, before I included myself in the edit of the film, um, because you just, you, you know, and you did that so well in mining the gap and it, it felt so motivated. And the one thing I remember from our conversation is you mentioned the word intention. Um, and I thought that was something, you know, in the early days of the film that, uh, that wasn't quite there. It's like, why do we care about this family? Because this was a project that was, is just fueled by the pure love that I have for them. And um, I'm so glad when we did speak, I was like, okay, why do I need to include myself, you know, in, in the narrative of this story? And I think it is because it gives intention to the film. It, it gives it, injects it with that love, you know, that I feel so strongly for them. And I hope that's what comes across the screen to audiences. So, you know, that was like one thing I really had to navigate because I never planned on, I, I always thought I would just be a fly on the wall when telling this story. Um, but that film needed that intention and that intention was love. Um, Having said that, you know, also in the early edits of the film, something I, I think I really struggled with was for myself personally, I think I was at a um, uh, a time, you know, during the pandemic where I was frustrated like so many other people. And that really showed in these early edits of the film. I, I think I was like trying to be a, a filmmaker who's standing on my soapbox and trying to, you know, prove an agenda. And I think when it comes to, uh, you know, creating real change and starting real dialogue, um, that's not the best and most effective way to do that. And I really have to credit my family for being so collaborative along the edit process for, you know, because, you know, it's when my mom says, like, you don't live here, David, like, you don't have to, um, you don't have to put up, you know, with the community like, like we, and she's right, she's 100% right. Because at the end of the day, you know, I live in New York, I can go back there. I'm not the one that is, you know, at the front hostess stand greeting every customer that comes in like my mom. Um, and so, you know, going back to these feelings of frustrations in these early edits of the film, it was really my family that reminded me why I was making this in the first place. And it wasn't, it wasn't to get on my soapbox and send out this big message about America. It was really because I wanted to share my family's story because I, I truly love them so much. And they're the ones that re reminded me of that. Um, and really, I think helped guide me along the edit process to get the film where it's at where, you know, it is a love letter to Bad X, but it's a love letter to family. Um, and I, I think that's just, you know, that's, that was just so important for me to come to that realization because I'm, you know, as I'm making this film, I'm going on my own personal journey too. You know, this film becomes self-interrogating in a way that it needs to be because it, it's, you know, like, why am I making this film? Why do I think, you know, this is a love letter to Bad X? And it's really just all out of the love I have for these individuals here. So, you know, I think you kind of lose yourself sometimes making a film and, and why you're doing it. Um, and, and for me, I, I'm certainly no exception, but I really have to credit my family for, you know, kind of bringing me back down to earth and, um, 
and just really telling our story, you know, not trying to tell the other side they're wrong if they think this or that we're right. It's really just like, we just want to show you our experience. And this is what it's like for this Cambodian Mexican American family living in rural Bad Axe, Michigan. And this is why we feel the way we feel. This is what we had to go through. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, when Jacqueline says, like, we're all part of the same community, it's absolutely true, right? And after people have gotten a chance to see this film, it's just, it's just led to really great dialogue. Because I think if I would have, if I, I think if I would have taken an angry approach to making this film, um, it would be a lot harder for people to want to have conversations after they get a chance to see it. But because you're putting a human face, a human side to, to, you know, these people, my family, I think that's why people are more willing to open up and have conversations now. So yeah, that was my own personal journey, I think, in, in making this film was that true self-interrogation. Well, that paid off in spades. So I'm glad you went through that process. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And we have to wrap it up in about five minutes, but I want to turn to the family and just get some updates. You know, we want to hear about the baby and, you know, Rachel, you just came from the restaurant. You were, you know, it's a Friday night that we're recording this and it's a busy time and you made time to be at this Q&A. Um, yeah, just give us a general update of where everyone's at. I, I think that uh, the, the restaurant been doing really well and we get ready to prepare for the the holiday that's coming up, you got Thanksgiving, you got everything now. But in the meantime, you know, thanks to Raquel and uh, she, she, Raquel yeah, and in Austin. The kitchen right and, now. <laughs> and you, you know what, Daniel? Raquel was a big fan of you. Oh my God. <laughs> she if just, she would just, just see just, you. Why do I always uh, have to be the baby it, of the family? Yeah, 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 you know. But, uh, you know, I, I am, again, I go back. I was so regretted. I was missed you during the. Uh, for the anniversary of Vincent Chen. I wish I get to meet you then. Hopefully I get to meet you again someday with a, with a great cause mm -hmm. for that. I hope that, so too. That. And tell her I'm a fan of hers as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. We will. Well, no, and I mean, as far as an update, these two were born to be grandparents. They, they love being grandparents. I will say that they are the best grandparents. They are my full-time babysitters, mm -hmm. um, you know, which I'm very, I'm very lucky to, you know, I moved back to Bad Axe um, and a big part of the reason, you know, with the restaurant and everything, but was that, you know, I knew that I would help have the community and the help that I needed to, to raise a baby because I had no idea how hard it was i knew it was hard but it's even harder than i imagined um, I, I, i'm not i'm not trying to take anything away from uh, you know my children's generation when i raised my children it was three of them two of us in a diaper and then we have one car where we got two car seats and we put one in the middle and then we seems to get by with the donut shop a failing business at a time right and now these kids we have, have one baby with have one seven baby adults, with seven adults. Right? I'll, I'll step in them yeah. but uh but Overall, Rachel and I, we learned to fall in love with the kid all over again. We never have a chance to give our children the love that they deserve because during that time of struggle, and I think, you know, some of us might be able to relate to it. Daniel, you might be able to relate to that, right? But uh, now, you know, it's a time now, you know, that, that I know what love really is. When I have my children, I was, I don't want to say I'm not, it's like I say, I really didn't have time to give them the love that they deserve. But uh, thank God right now, the grandchildren, I have a second chance. <laughs> I have a second chance. So. And she just turned one. She did a so, couple of days ago. Yes, so, yes. So, thank, yes. thank no, you. No, thank you. Yeah, no, they're, they're great. Wow, circle of life. It's a beautiful thing. Yes. Um, I, I think I'll close it out with one last question to Daniel. Daniel, I know you do a lot of work in the Asian American community. Um, and this story, you know, is speaks so much to what is happening in Asia, in Asian America today. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, Chan, you're right. I, I can relate a lot to, to your story and your family's story because it's, it's so similar to my family's story. You know, my father is an immigrant to this country. Uh, and uh, I grew up under his shadow. Uh, he had very strong opinions and beliefs about how I should live, and 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 so it was about me finding my own voice, uh, you know, in uh, in relation to my my parents and 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 their culture. And so uh, that really resonated with me. Um, and I would also say that the thing that resonated with me is that 
you know, uh, so often um, we, we, we're asked to take a side uh, in this country as Asian Americans, you know, politically, whether we're blue or red. Uh, and, you know, the thing that I think is the most important beyond what side we're on is, is two things. One, how can we just create a safe environment where our families can thrive and prosper? That is something that cuts across all political ideologies. And I think the other thing is, uh, one of the, the, the most powerful messages of this movie, it's, it's not really about whether you're red or blue. It's mm -hmm. really about how we can all get along as a larger community. Sure, mm -hmm. as Asian Americans, we have our own stories and we have our own uh, things to reconcile within ourselves, but we also have our neighbors and right. the people that we see every day who may not believe the same things, but how can we coexist, disagree, and still be respectful and still consider each other part of humanity? Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing, I, the last thing I'd want to say is that it underscores the need for intersectionality, all of this. If you just look at the Civ family, you look at how many races are, are in that family, it is a microcosm of our country. And it's no coincidence that this whole story was activated by the Black Lives Matter movement. So it's not against people of color versus, uh, you know, the white population. If you look at the civs, their family is not that way. It's really a question of people with different philosophies, people beliefs, uh, different beliefs, tr trying to find a way to live together peacefully. And that's what makes this story so small, uh, so big. And it goes beyond the Asian American community. We are one community of many in the fabric of this entire country. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Very well said. Yeah. Thank you. Beautifully said. Thank you, Daniel. Well, thank you once again for everybody to, uh, coming to watch the film. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please, please, please tell everyone to see it. You know, this is one of those films that's so hard to describe what it's actually about. Yes, it's about, you know, a Mexican Cambodian family trying to run a restaurant in rural Michigan, but it becomes about so much more. And it's a it's a film that's going to, you know, really take off through word of mouth um, if if we all do our part and just get people to see it. So I urge you to go out and be a champion for the film. I know I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay.